So today I'm going to give you a rundown on my loft that I had constructed in my 40 by 60 pole barn. Pardon my mess. The building's been up for about a year, but I'm pretty slow going. You know, basically every all my stuff is out of the weather, and uh, I need to finish my electrical before I can put everything against the wall, sheet the walls, and get everything put away. It's kind of a mess in here. But people have asked for kind of an update video, and so here we go. I'm going to include the prices and the drawings and a material takeoff list. So let's get right in. I'll try to show you all the details, and hopefully this is helpful. So when the building was constructed, I'll kind of step back here a little bit. When the building was constructed, I reinforced the concrete in the area where I knew the posts were going to be. I think it's, uh, I think I made it like uh, 24 by 24 by 26 deep. So below these two vertical posts, I reinforced the concrete per the contractor's recommendation to reinforce the concrete. I'm sure there's a way around that. If you didn't do that, I'm not sure exactly what that is. But if you notice, the posts line up with the main structure posts behind it. So everything is symmetrical. Again, I mostly do motorcycle videos, but people have requested this video, kind of showing the details of my loft. So here we are. So I'll just start right here up in this corner. I know it's kind of dark in here. Again, I don't have much for power out here. My lighting is very limited, but you can see those hangers attached to the main, the main building, the main building post that runs right down and is sunk five feet into crushed rock per the engineering requirements. So you can see the hangers, what they did here in order to fill out those hangers to make that six inch width, they used two by 12s, three two by 12s, and some half inch plywood, sandwich it all together, nail it all together in order to make basically, you know, the equivalent of, of a laminate post, a P-LAM post. So yeah, um, two by 12s tripled up around the perimeter to each supporting post. And because my building's 40 feet in depth, I think these are, uh, are roughly 12 foot centers, something like that. You can see it corresponds it runs over, coming off of each post three ways. It's it's a stack up of those two by twelves with a piece of plywood in there, coming off of each six by six post. And running over to the beam at the far end of the building. You can see that detail I'll kind of choke back. If that helps. Yeah, same detail. Two by twelves, three thick. Same thing coming over to this post. And then two by twelves on sixteen inch centers all the way across. So I'm coming back to this kind of where it all begins. Sorry about the lighting starts here runs around the perimeter of the building picks up this door post going to show that detail it's a door support post and there's how it's fit up there continues on
to the corner post. Continues down the length of the building, or not the length, the, the depth of the building, 40 foot run. Picks up this, keeps going. Picks up this one, keeps going, all the way down to the opposite corner and there's that opposite corner from a different angle and then it's unsupported there well it's supported at that corner post and then it picks up this post and then it goes 10 feet to this post and that's it then it runs back runs back across This bay between these two posts is 10 feet, and this bay is 8 feet. So I'll kind of give you a view like that, looking towards the doors. And from the doors, I'll give you a view looking to the back of the building. So let's take a look at the stairwell see how they did that detail they did a really nice job they made the stairs four feet wide but they ran a they ran a post up to pick up that corner so that supports this whole corner of the loft and it comes down and it fastens to the concrete with another one of those Simpson and I see the part number on there Simpson strong tie part and that That has one Half inch or five eighths fastener right in the middle of it Yeah, I think you can see the part number on there And that keeps this untreated Oh, it gives you a, a way to fasten and keeps this untreated lumber off the off the concrete And here for this uh, landing support, there's the landing. For this landing support, they just put down a piece of vapor barrier and it's just toenailed into the, the bottom girt, this bottom girt, just toenailed just to keep it from moving around. And then it attaches to the corner post that's set the treated corner post that's set five feet into the ground and another support post again with just a piece of vapor barrier underneath it and toenailed into the bottom girt. Here's a detail going up the steps. Again, four feet wide with uh, 12 inch landings. And about a four by four landing right here. And I like the way they, they cap that in coming up the steps. Pretty nice. Coming up, a few more steps. And that corner post where the loft continues up gave me some room to put a handrail there. So I had a leftover stack of, of uh, two by sixes and I just used those because I had them here to create a permanent railing up here to protect the uh, just to protect that opening so no one fell in and uh, I think it turned out pretty decent it's solid it's it's not going anywhere you can climb all over it no post on the end is yeah rock solid This railing is just temporary. I just put some two by sixes uh, at up At the end of the video, I'll put a still photo of the detail that, that I intend to create up here to make kind of a nice looking little architectural rail that's not too heavy 
I may make it removable in this center section in case I need to bring something up that I don't want to pack up the stairs. And I'll probably, probably cut these posts off here. It's uh, 18 by 40. Pretty nice. Hey, I'm 6'3", and I can walk right underneath this sucker. I can walk right underneath that. So it worked out really good with the scissor trusses. You got plenty of room to move around. You're not going to smack your head on anything. The decking is three quarters thick, and it's a tongue and groove that they glued down so it doesn't squeak, and they smacked it together you know, to get a nice tight fit. Okay, here's the drawings and the invoice. And I'll take stills of these, so please watch to the end. And I'll uh, I'll take some good pictures, and you should be able to zoom in on those and, and see the materials that were used and the dimensions. Hey, please like and subscribe to Krusty Cycle. It really helps our channel. And by the way, about the cost... So I was able to get the materials for about $6,800. I know there's no prices on the invoice, but it was like $6,800 here in uh, Washington State in Western Washington. And I paid two of the guys that work with the contractor. I paid them $1,500. They were able to knock this out in two days. Thanks for watching.